Welcome back. It is 838 right now. We've been telling you this morning about the lost JFK film taken by a woman named Patsy Pascal of Dallas on the day that uh, the president was shot in Dallas 32 years ago. She has held on to the film since then, now says she wants to go public. Linda Wong is with her at her home, and they join us live. Linda? Hi, Tim. I'm here with uh, Patsy Pascal, who had, uh, is not only a terribly interesting woman, but she had witnessed one of the most incredible moments of history here in Dallas. Thank you for joining us. What I wanted to ask you, first of all, is that for 32 years, you had held on to this extremely rare film that you had. Why not go public with it back then? Well, at the time, we didn't know, well, the, we didn't know what had happened or who was responsible. So I just felt better and safe by putting it away until another time. You felt like something was going to happen to you? Yes, I did. In fact, the, that night, I spent the night with my mother-in-law because I was afraid to stay at home. I really had no idea what I had on my film. When did you realize that this was more than just another filming of a president going by? Probably I've realized it all along. I just didn't, uh, for a long time, I did not feel safe having this film because I really didn't know what it would say or what it was showing. So I just put it in a lockbox and have kept it all this long time. But it's time now for the public to know and to see these films. But even before now, there were a select few who were able to gain access to your film. Who else has been able to see this rare footage? It was uh, the Warren Commission subpoenaed the films, and um, which would be the House Select Committee had them, and then my family members at one time. They've been locked away for years, and I, I just knew to everything there is a season, and I felt that when the time came, I'd know it, and it's here. You have, you still have the camera that you were using. I'm going to ask you to take it out for us and show us what it is. Oh, yes. How old is this camera? Well. I bought it before the assassination. I really don't know. Uh, it's a Bell and Howell 8 millimeter color. Uh, we did colored film of the, uh, of the parade and all. And I really don't know the age of it. Of course, Bell and Howell is not in business now, so I wish they were. <laughs> I'm told that we have some of the footage that you shot back at the studio. So I'm going to ask, basically, where were you? What vantage point did you have? Where were you standing? And, and what were you seeing at the time? I was in the old red courthouse. I was the clerk of the 162nd District Court with Judge D. Brown Walker. And we knew that, the, that Kennedy and was coming to town. And of course, I was very fond of Jackie. So I took my camera to work. And I was in the, on the third floor of the old red courthouse. And back then, you could raise the window and, you know, see everything that was going on. Mm -hmm. You had a very, uh, not a very, but you had a different vantage point than the famous film that we see, you know, all the time, the Zapruder film. How is yours different from what he saw? I have him in my film. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, and, of course, I was up looking down on everything. It was a, a big difference. And, of course, when the president was assassinated, people were just falling to the ground. Everything went crazy. And... Um, we, in fact, did not know that he had been assassinated at the time. And then, of course, it didn't take long when the, they, the word began to get around there that, ever, that it had happened. And um, we thought, I thought somebody was popping firecrackers from the knoll because I heard a, like, pow and a pause and pow, pow, you know. You'll, I'll never forget the sound. And it, like you, there was smoke coming from the knoll like you had, had popped some firecrackers, you know. So... Uh, it, then it registered, you know, that it had what had really happened, and everything was chaotic. People didn't know which way to go or fall down or run. It was kind of a, it became a scary point in time. Now, the smoke coming from the knoll is the reason why you have slightly a different version of um, what had happened there from the Warren Commission's theory that it was Lee Har Harvey Oswald from the old uh, School Book Depository building. What do you think? What is your theory on Oh, I think definitely that there was more than one person involved. That's my personal opinion. And, uh, of course, I haven't talked to the Warren Commission. Uh, I haven't spoke to anyone. No one has ever talked with me about my film or what was on the film. Mm -hmm. So I found that unusual because I've always been right downtown. You know, I'm at City Hall now, and I, I was at the county for eight years. So... I couldn't understand. Then I see these things. This is the Warren report. This is about Kennedy. 
but if my name isn't in there, it isn't all of history because I saw it from a vintage vantage point that no one else could see. Mm -hmm. See? Thank you. I'm going to ask you to hold on for a moment. I know that uh, you've been working with a uh, local historian, and mm -hmm. uh, I believe that Mark Oakes is back with uh, Tim back at the station, so we're going to toss it to you for now. And uh, Mark Oakes apparently has had a great deal of work with uh, Mrs. Pascal about this film. That's right. So, in fact, Mark joins us now live in the studio. And Mark, this is your this is your work. This is your profession. How did you stumble across Patsy? Well, I had read about her through FBI documents, which are only partly declassified, which we're working on getting the answers as to the discrepancies that the FBI has seen in her film. Continue to this day to be partly classified. The the blacked out area that we see is is classified information. Exactly, and through the JFK Act, we are going to present it, this to President Bill Clinton, and we are going to find out the answer to this problem that okay. lies in her film, that the FBI has kept censored for 32 years. Now you've seen the entire film. We should make it clear we did not show you the entire film because you all are trying, in fact, to sell the entire film. What did we not see, and why is it important? Uh, Patsy was the only person to film the grassy knoll 15 seconds after the assassination from a high elevation. She not only caught Bill and Gail Newman laying on the ground in the entire picket fence and grassy knoll area, but she also caught Abraham Zapruder jumping off his pedestal and running for his life, which is what he said he did, but we had never seen that to that point. I believe that there is movement behind the fence, which is what the House Select Committee in 1979 concluded and the man who concluded that stands by his acoustical evidence that, that supported that conclusion. But there was a shot from back there. They said a fourth shot fence. was fired from behind that fence, and they have tried to undermine this conclusion, but I believe that Patsy's film will uh, provide the answers to and support the House Select Committee uh, findings. You see then, does it appear clear to you, you see movement on the grassy behind the fence? Behind the fence. Puff of smoke you alluded to? Uh, now that I'm not going to say for sure because I want some experts to look at this film. Uh, we are interested in selling it, but I'm not an expert. I do have a friend, uh, Greg James, that uh, is my video consultant who has looked at the film and he feels that there might be smoke uh, on that film. But I will say there's definitely movement behind the fence and uh, from that angle uh, with uh, technology we can blow that up and find out and let the chips fall where they may. Who might be interested in buying this? Uh, there are probably several people that, uh, uh, that do documentaries that would be very interested in that. And uh, also, um, there's a man in Florida that, that uh, collects this information that would be interested. Uh, and uh, there are several people of, of interest that that would be to. It, with all due respect, I can understand if you have it in your possession, you're going to say, gee, I'm going to sell it and, and make some money off of this. On the other hand, it's a part of history. Should it be sold or should it be hand it over to some experts to analyze and become a part of history. Well, what you have to understand is the general public doesn't know there were over nine movie films of the assassination taken, and none of those people have donated theirs. Uh, Abraham Zapruder's family charges 30000 and up to view it, uh, to use it. Um, Orville Nix took a beautiful film of the assassination, and they charge for showing it. It is part of history, and if Patsy... Uh, was rich, if I was rich, I would love to do that. I would do that today. I would insist on doing that. But I think that after all this time and, and, and the people that, you know, have made money on their other films, I think that Patsy deserves some sort of monetary value for her film, and, and she deserves that. And, and uh, um, it's just a matter of, um, of that uh, after all these years that I think she deserves something more. Can, we can ask, I think we can go back to Patsy and ask her a question. Patsy, you indicated that you were actually afraid and that is why you kept this uh, locked away for 32 years. Of what or of whom were you afraid? Well, we really didn't know who, who we are, were afraid of because it was such so chaotic. We did not know who was responsible for this. In fact, we still don't. So I didn't feel comfortable having this around and so I, my attorney kept the film for me in the lockbox all these years. Why now? Why 1995? Because after, all, after 32 years, it's time. I mean, so let it be. Okay, Mark, do you, was she legitimate? Did she have reason to be afraid, to be concerned for her life? There will 
was several discrepancies on people's films that uh, they either reported were, even the Zapruder film was tampered with. Uh, you can clearly see there were splices in it. Orville Nix has uh, complained for years, the family of Orville Nix, they don't even have the original film. Uh, the family of Orville Nix said that uh, UPI gave it to the House Select Committee and the House Select Committee said they gave it back to UPI. There's no original film. Uh, there's a lady who took movie film purportedly to be Beverly Oliver on the south side of Elm Street. Nobody's ever seen that film. There's a lot of film controversy and there's even film controversy in Patsy's film and we don't know what's in it. If a lady took color movie film and it's about one person doing the shooting from the school book depository, then why black out a document? Why not release the information and let us see it? Uh, this is ridiculous to have a document about a ladies movie film that's still blacked out after all these years. Absolutely ridiculous. And like I said, we will have the film enhanced and we will let the chips fall where they may, whichever way is fine. But don't hide the information don't lock away the documents. The public needs to see this information. Okay, final question. I mean, you think you have, based upon the law, you do have uh, the ability to get this, whatever this information is in this FBI report, removed. Whatever it was that the FBI may have seen in this film 32 years ago. There's a man in Washington now that is uh, with the uh, Records Review Board that is examining this and Patsy Pascal's interview and he is going to, I don't know the procedures, the technical procedures, but he is uh, going to present this to the president. And I believe that the law says that he has 30 days to either uh, restore this redaction or to leave it sealed up to the year 2039. Okay. And then we'll find out. If it means nothing, fine. But logically, let's talk about blacking out a document about a ladies' movie film. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't understand the connection. If here. it doesn't show anything, why block it out? Exactly. Okay. Mark, thank you very much for joining us live this morning. And Patsy and Linda, thank you very much for joining us live as well. Thank you. Fascinating information. At noon. It's been locked away in a safe for 32 years. We'll see a film taken the day of the Kennedy assassination. Congress takes yet another look at the Branch Davidian disaster. An historic federal trial goes to the jury, and if he's convicted, this man could get the death penalty. And vandals hit a North Texas church. We will have the latest on that. Good afternoon, I'm Tim Ryan. Another piece in the puzzle of the Kennedy assassination is put in place today. It is a film shot almost 32 years ago, the day President Kennedy was shot. Linda Wong is live on Dealey Plaza with this intriguing story. Linda? Tim, intriguing is right. So intriguing that the woman who shot that film calls it the missing piece of the JFK story. Now, we've all known of the famous film clip shot by Abraham Zabruder, but this is from a very different vantage point, not from the ground, but from the third floor of this old red courthouse. Her video shows the president coming down Main Street and then the motorcade racing by under the underpass and the frantic crowd scene after people realized the president had been shot. A local historian claims the four-minute clip also shows smoke coming from the grassy knoll, which would support the 1979 conclusions of the House Select Committee on Assassinations that there indeed was a fourth shot that was fired. I think that what we see on this film will support their conclusion that there was a second shooter from the grassy knoll, that there was a fourth shot, and that there was a conspiracy in the murder of John F. Kennedy. I do want to point out the fact that the film clip that you saw is a very short clip just for obvious reasons because they do plan on marketing it out on the open market and uh, Patsy, Patsy Pascal who is the person who shot the film also wants you to know that that is not the original the original is in color and it is also very clear very clear and in color okay the attorney has it in a lock box it's kept in a lock box it's been there for about 32 years 32 years could you tell me why so long that you have kept this under lock and key and you haven't really said anything about it well, I just didn't feel the time was right. For a long time, I was afraid to let it be known that I had the film because I really knew, didn't know the story behind why that they did this. And of course, we were all very fond of our president and we're very proud that he came to Texas. And so, it, but it was scary not knowing the real story or why that this was happening. And then of course, it was, no one ever talked to me about my role of film or, you know, to question what I saw or, you know, and of course everything looked to Oswald, but there was smoke coming from the knoll. And I made the remark, why is someone popping firecrackers? You know, the, my words were, 
some nuts pop in firecrackers because the smoke was about what a firecracker, you know, two or three of them would uh, would be. So we saw that looking down on the street, and but it, nobody ever asked a question about it. And so I didn't press it because I was afraid to, for anyone to know that I had the film. So I just feel like the time has passed and it's time that, that it go into history. Now that short film clip that we had seen did not show the pictures of the smoke coming from the grassy knoll, but the fact that that video does exist, and there's some discrepancy on whether or not there really is smoke coming from that area, right. but that would blow the whole theory that uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was the only shooter. Now, you believe that theory is a sham. I definitely think it's a sham. I think that he might have been involved, you know, and probably was, but there were more involved because there was smoke coming from the knoll, and I, it had to be, and like I said, we heard the shots, I did, and there was a pow and a pause and pow pow. And uh, it, it, it definitely, immediately I knew that when we realized that something had happened, that everybody began to run to the knoll because it was just almost obvious, you know? And I couldn't imagine at that time anything coming from the depository because everybody was running that way and the smoke came from that way. So I felt definitely, there, he was involved, but I'm sure there's more to it than that. Okay, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Now, as we had told you, the uh, film that she had was requested by the government, and they did send it away for the to be studied by the Warren Commission afterwards, and she did receive the film back. Now, there is some question on whether or not that film was received back in its original form, whether or not it had been doctored. Now, her attorney is uh, apparently a very good attorney. 32 years ago, he had thought ahead enough to get a copy of it made before he sent it to the government, and so pretty soon here, they'll be checking to see if there are any discrepancies in between them. Tim? The intrigue continues. Thanks, Linda. And Patsy Pascal says she should know since she was there and got it all on film. But unlike the famous Abraham Zabruder clip of the assassination, hers was taken from the fourth floor of the old red courthouse, where Pascal says she could see what seemed like shots fired from the grassy knoll. It was the type of smoke you'd see when you would pop firecrackers, that kind of a smoke coming from the knoll. It wasn't a heavy, but you could, it was enough you could see it. People began to run toward the knoll. And uh, especially it looked like the police officers and people just running up there to see who had done that. Pascal says that's why she believes Lee Harvey Oswald was not the lone gunman since his shots came from the depository building. Government investigators saw Pascal's film after the shooting, but this is the first time the public gets to see it. We'll tell you what some claim the film is worth coming up on News for Texas at 6. The John F. Kennedy assassination. Patsy Pascal says she can back up her belief with film she shot back in 1963. News for Texas reporter Linda Wong shows us some of the rare footage that's been kept from the public until now. It's been nearly 30 years since Patsy Pascal has stepped foot into the old Red County Courthouse. She worked on the fourth floor as a clerk when President John F. Kennedy paid his first official trip to Dallas. Oh, this is the room. Her reminiscent excitement quickly turned to sadness as she recalls witnessing one of the darkest moments in U.S. history. You never forget, and you always hear those gunshots. And people just went crazy. They, they didn't know whether to laugh, cry. It was a sad day. But there's smoke came from that knoll. That scene is not included in this short clip her attorney allowed for public release. But local historian Mark Oak says he's seen the four-minute film in its entirety, and he's convinced... There was a second shooter from the grassy knoll, that there was a fourth shot, and that there was a conspiracy in the murder of John F. Kennedy. The government requested Pascal's film for its investigation, but she kept the original in a lockbox with her attorney and kept it a secret. If you've got something on there that people don't want seen, what are they subject to do to me if I put these things out for people to see or, uh, you know, I didn't, I was afraid for my life, to be quite honest. Pascal says she now feels safe enough to go public. Another reason that Pascal is breaking her silence after more than 30 years is that her rare footage is now on sale to go to the highest bidder. I can't even imagine a value. Can you imagine the people that do documentaries that would love to see this? Can you imagine that even Chief Robert Blakey, the former counsel to the House Select Committee, would love to have this? Uh, the value uh, could be unlimited. Directors of the Sixth Floor Museum say they'd like to see it donated to them for historic preservation. 
because that is the appropriate place for it, ultimately. History is going to be written many years from now about this event and having all of the bits and pieces together for a scholar, or an academician, or a historian to come in is in our, everybody's best interest. But Pascal says others who shot film of that day have made a great deal from their luck of historic timing. So why shouldn't she? In Dallas, Linda Huang, News 4, Texas. Museum directors say several groups have already seen the film. There are bootleg copies scattered throughout the country. Pascal's attorney says the clip released today has been altered so it cannot be copied cleanly. You noticed it was jumping on your screen. Historian Mark Oak says he expects that its sale could draw at least a quarter of a million dollars. About the president's death, the woman who took that film says she knows Lee Harvey Oswald did not act alone. She says her film proves it. Sean Rabb is live now from Dealey Plaza with more on the film and the woman who wants to sell it. Sean? As you say, Phyllis, we are live here along Dealey Plaza. Behind us, of course, the infamous Grassy Knoll that over the years has been the focal point of whether or not there were more assassins waiting for the presidential motorcade. The footage released today, though, will probably give rise to more questions than answers about what really happened November 22nd, 1963. For everyone in Dallas and across the nation today, though, the release of the footage has seen a return to history. You never forget, and you always hear those gunshots. Patsy Pascal and her Bell and Howell 8 millimeter captured these pictures of President John F. Kennedy's death ride through Dealey Plaza. People just went crazy. Pascal's four minutes of history, locked in a safe deposit box for 32 years, seen only by her attorney, the FBI, and the House Select Committee on Assassinations until now. Oh, this is the room. Pascal is overcome with emotions and memories of that numbing November day as she returns to the old red courthouse where she says she saw and heard more than just shots. There was smoke coming from the knoll and I, it had to be and like I said we heard the shots, I did, and there was a pow and a pause and pow pow. That's not part of footage released today. But historian Mark Oakes has seen the film in its entirety and says he's convinced it shows Lee Harvey Oswald did not act alone. There was a second shooter from the grassy knoll, that there was a fourth shot, and that there was a conspiracy in the murder of John F. Kennedy. Pascal kept her peace for more than three decades because she believes the conspiracy theory and wondered how far a cover-up would go. If you've got something on there that people don't want seen, what are they subject to do to me if I put these things out for people to see? Or, uh, you know, I didn't. I was afraid for my life, to be quite honest. Now, Pascal hopes someone will pay her for her footage and enhance it to prove her memory of November 22, 1963, correct. But directors of the Sixth Floor Museum, which preserves Kennedy memorabilia hopes Pascal's pictures will be donated to them. Because that is the appropriate place for it, ultimately. History is going to be written many years from now about this event and having all of the bits and pieces together for a scholar, an academician, or a historian to come in is in our, everybody's best interest. So indeed, the flames of conspiracy have been rekindled with the release of the footage today. More importantly, Mrs. Pascal knows that what she has may be priceless. It also may bring a pretty price. Phyllis? Sean Rabb reporting live from Dealey Plaza. Thank you. Lee Harvey Oswald was not the only gunman in the JFK assassination. News for Texas reporter Linda Huang shows us some rare footage never seen by the public until now. It's been nearly 30 years since Patsy Pascal has stepped foot into the old Red County Courthouse. She worked on the fourth floor as a clerk when President John F. Kennedy paid his first official trip to Dallas. Oh, this is the room. Her reminiscent excitement quickly turned to sadness as she recalls witnessing one of the darkest moments in U.S. history. You never forget, and you always hear those gunshots. And people just went crazy. They, they didn't know whether to laugh, cry. It was a sad day. But there's smoke came from that nose. That scene is not included in this short clip her attorney allowed for public release. The local historian Mark Oak says he's seen the four-minute film in its entirety, and he's convinced... There was a second shooter from the grassy knoll, that there was a fourth shot, and that there was a conspiracy in the murder of John F. Kennedy. The government requested Pascal's film for its investigation, but she kept the original in a lockbox with her attorney and kept it a secret. If you've got something on there that people don't want seen, what are they subject to do to me if I put these things out for people to see or, uh, 
you know, I didn't, I was afraid for my life, to be quite honest. Pascal says she now feels safe enough to go public. Another reason that Pascal is breaking her silence after more than 30 years is that her rare footage is now on sale to go to the highest bidder. I can't even imagine a value. Can you imagine the people that do documentaries that would love to see this? Can you imagine that even Chief Robert Blakey, the former counsel to the House Select Committee, would love to have this? Uh, the value uh, could be unlimited. Directors of the Sixth Floor Museum say they'd like to see it donated to them for historic preservation. Because that is the appropriate place for it, ultimately. History is going to be written many years from now about this event and having all of the bits and pieces together for a scholar, an academician, or a historian to come in is in our, everybody's best interest. But Pascal says others who shot film of that day have made a great deal from their luck of historic timing. So why shouldn't she? In Dallas, Linda Huang, News 4, Texas. Pascal's attorney says the clip released today was altered so it can't be copied cleanly. One historian says he expects that tape to sell for at least a quarter of a million dollars. And Tim Heller. Today is the 32nd anniversary of the assassination of President John Kennedy. Researchers are always looking for new information about his murder. Ironically, that new evidence may be revealed today right here in Dallas. Julia Summers joins us live from our Dallas newsroom to explain. Julia? Tim, the Assassinations Records Review Board today is appealing to the public for photographs and home movies taken by anyone who was at Dealey Plaza when President Kennedy was gunned down 32 years ago. And today on this anniversary, the area is filled, as you can see, with those who came to remember. This is a live look at Dealey Plaza right now from our Eagle Eye camera. Just a few minutes ago, a wreath was laid at the Kennedy Memorial. While many Americans honor the president today, researchers are still looking for new information about President Kennedy's assassination. And that new evidence may be on this segment of film that's been hidden away for more than 30 years. Now, a few weeks ago, we showed you for the first time ever this footage that a Dallas woman shot the day President Kennedy was killed. The film, though, as you can see, is not very clear. So this morning, we obtained an enhanced version of that film. And we asked the former head of the FBI to look at the footage and to share his thoughts on what it might reveal. He saw it just a few minutes ago, and here's his reaction. Any potential evidence should be examined under the most uh, uh, positive possible circumstances. Um, and mm -hmm. I can't tell from the naked eye here anything that would... Uh, uh, be suspicious, but uh, uh, I think obviously a, a crime of this magnitude that any potential new information should be closely examined, as I did when I was in charge of the investigation until I retired. That was Buck Revell, former head of the FBI. Now, Patsy Pascal, who shot this footage, would not allow us to show you the entire film. She has hopes of selling it and making money, as the Zapruder family has. I even asked Patsy if she would at least share her video with researchers who might want to examine it. She said she'd have to first check with her lawyer. Tim. Julia, what we were seeing there inside that circle almost looked like some flashes. Is that, po is that what they're suggesting? In fact, they were perhaps gun flashes? That's what Patsy's suggesting. She says that it is behind the fence there and that you can see movement. And she says that she shot her film just after the president was shot. She believes that as someone leaving the scene. Mr. Ravel says, though, it is clear that that area, although it was supposed to be secured, was not adequately secured and it could have been anyone behind the fence. He did say, though, as you heard, that they should look at it. Okay, fascinating new information. Thanks very much. He was assassinated in downtown Dallas 32 years ago. And on the anniversary of President Kennedy's assassination, researchers tonight are asking the public for help. The Assassinations Records Review Board would like any photos or home movies of Dealey Plaza from that fateful day. As Julia Summers reports, one Dallas woman says she may have just what researchers are looking for. Hundreds flocked to the Kennedy Memorial to pay their respects on the anniversary of his assassination. Memories of 32 years ago, captured in the heart, and some on film. I was so excited because I loved Jackie. I thought she was just so wonderful and, oh, gives me chills. Patsy Pascal shows us the home movie she took in Dealey Plaza that fateful day, when excitement turned to horror. It was just total chaos. We first showed you Pascal's film a few weeks ago. For 32 years, no one but Patsy and those investigating the assassinations had ever seen it. 
Because of the poor quality, it was difficult to see any detail. Well, now, for the first time, part of the footage has been enhanced, and it may reveal something new. To find out, we invited Buck Ravel, former head of the Dallas FBI office, to look at Patsy's film. Where, where are you standing? Are you taking okay, I'm in, on the fourth floor of the old red courthouse. Mm -hmm. Now, the president's limousine has already gone under the underpass. I'm, I'm interested in what you can see at the picket fence. See that? You can see. See that light? Something moving back there. I don't know what it is. There's right, obviously I mean, it's, some. It's interesting. Yeah, there's something there that uh, I think, with today's technology, needs to be enhanced and uh, see what what develops. But right. uh, I want to emphasize, I don't see anything at this point. But Patsy says she not only saw what happened, she heard it. Three distinct shots. I heard three. There was a pow and a pause and pow pow. Right. I mean, this is for real. I wouldn't budge a smidget because that's the way it was. I don't care what anybody says. I know what I saw. She saw what she saw, but there's just absolutely no way that those shots came from the knoll. The shots were fired from behind that knoll. Why that it's not wanted to be uh, accepted, I have no idea. But I was looking down, and I know what I saw, and it'll never change. Um, I don't see anything there that um, is obviously suspicious, but I think that that's by the naked eye, and certainly it needs to be examined. Pascal refused to allow us to show you the entire film because she eventually has plans of selling it. Interest in the mystery surrounding the president's death is still at an all-time high. I asked her if she would at least share it with some researchers who might want to examine it. She said she'd have to first check with her attorney. At Daily Plaza, I'm Julia Summers, News 4, Texas. Joining us now from Dealey Plaza to talk more about all of the unanswered questions and unending theories concerning JFK's death is Dave Perry. Thanks for being with us, sir. Good evening. You describe yourself as a conservative, pro-conspiracy researcher. What does all that mean? Well, basically, I believe the possibility of a conspiracy. As a matter of fact, there were at least three conspiracies in operation at the time that Kennedy was assassinated. It's just over the years, so many conspiracy researchers have given us false leads, it's created confusion among the, the population. For example, if you check all the available literature, you're going to find that over 61 individuals have been named as being here in Dealey Plaza to actually do or assist in doing bodily harm to the president. Now, you said that the theory pool has kind of harmed things. It's become a cottage industry, really. How is all that hurting the historical record? Well, what happens is, I, I don't know if you remember it or not, but about five years ago, a young man came forward and claimed that his father, Roscoe White, a police officer, fired the fatal shot from the grassy knoll behind the picket fence. Mm -hmm. uh, that was five years ago, and there was a large body of researchers who claimed his story authentic. Where five years later, nothing new has been discovered and nothing more has been said. So it's almost as each year there is a new assassination theory du jour and it goes away, and again, it leaves the public in a great deal of confusion. How do you as a researcher distinguish fact from fiction? Well, it's very difficult to do. What I have, what I do, which I think is different from most of the published authors, is I spend a lot of time in archives. I spend a lot of time in Dallas City Hall, in the public library, fact-checking. Uh, whereas the authors of books are looking for sensational items that sell information. As an example, uh, a couple of years ago, an author claimed that a Secret Service agent in a follow-up car to the president's motorcade accidentally shot Kennedy in the back of the head. Now again, with, with movies like JFK, the general population, they agree, 80% of the public agrees that there probably was a conspiracy. The House Select Committee considered there was a conspiracy. But again, when you have people naming 61 individuals, Aren't you confused by all this? <laughs> <laughs> Very quickly, do you think we'll ever know the truth? Uh, it's, it's getting more and more difficult. We're 33 or 32 years away now. Uh, I haven't seen the Patsy Pascal film. I would love to see her turn that over to some reputable scholars to have them take a unbiased look at, at uh, new information which might be on that film. But as the years go by, uh, I'm afraid to say, okay. I don't think we'll ever know. All right. Dave Perry, thank you very much for being with us from Dealey Plaza. Thank you. 
Well, they say home is where the heart